Welcome back to the watch list. Sports betting has certainly come into the spotlight when you have a big game like the Super Bowl, what we saw yesterday that actually took place in Las Vegas for the very first time. Um, it's time to focus on some of these Vegas casinos and DraftKings and the like. Let's welcome in our panel, Jordan Bender, Senior Equity Analyst at Citizens JMP, and Zach Waring, Equity Analyst at CFRA. Thank you both for being with us. So at JMP, you sent a, a whole thing about the group overall. What kind of trends are we seeing in betting? Are more people betting? What kind of bets are they doing? Um, tell us a little bit about that, Jordan. Yeah, so even outside of Super Bowl, the last couple of months, or really the last year, we've seen in people increasingly bet more and more, and that's just the overall industry, DraftKings and FanDuel, just getting better at what they're doing, building a product that everyone likes, and it's keeping people on the platforms for longer and longer, betting more and more. So, you know, that really kind of leads into the two weeks up to Super Bowl. Um, there's a little bit of a misconception that you know, that's that's the best customer acquisition period of the year for a company um, in the sports betting or online gaming space. Um, but that's actually not true in a way where these aren't the typical customers that are going to be retained for a long period of time. But that's not to say, you know, over the last year, we've had a couple of states come online, which have helped grow the overall size of the betting pool. Um, you know, we estimated that the Super Bowl uh, wagering was at 1.5 to 1.6 billion dollars in wagers yesterday alone. So we can see the evolution over time of how much um, you know, where we started just five years ago when um, the, when the U.S. said you know we can bet on sports betting now to where we've become today. And not only that, but we're now hosting Super Bowls in Las Vegas, where only a couple of years ago, you know, this just wasn't a thing that we would hear of. Yeah, and so with the average bet size, to your point, on the rise, Zach Waring, um, what kind of, and when you look at the group overall, and we have a few names that we've already mentioned, which ones do you think are doing it right? Yeah, I mean, so for online or mobile, we like obviously the two biggest, DraftKings and FanDuel. Um, so Flutter Entertainment is there, um, the company that yeah. FanDuel's under. Uh, so we like those two names. We think they're the dominant players. We think they're going to make up almost 80% of the total market for online mobile sports betting. Um, and we just think that they're the two to own, too. It's interesting because, I mean, there are other competitors in there, right? I mean, if this these two make up the 80%, um, the other competitors just don't really have enough penetration or not enough market share. Is that, is that what that is, Zach? Yeah, I mean, so obviously they were the first to, to get out. They, were, they had their fantasy, um, their fantasy apps, so they were in the market before you know, sports betting was legal in 2018. And then um, after legislation passed, they were quick to jump on it. So they were just first movers, and we think that was the big reason. They had the technology in place for fantasy, which was easy to scale for sports betting. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it just the other the other brands, MGM, when they came in later and their technology wasn't you know, as good um, and they just couldn't compete when in terms of, you know, the marketing spend that DraftKings and, and Flutter were able to spend. So um, we just think that this is kind of the, the market now for these companies. We just don't see another, um, you know, ESPN bet had a successful launch, but we just don't see them taking much market share in terms of their technology and innovation that, that DraftKings and Flutter has. Yeah, understood. And I see you have buy ratings on Las Vegas Sands and MGM, but Jordan, how do you feel about some of those big names, those big casinos? What are your ratings? Yeah, you know, I think the Super Bowl highlights what Vegas has really become. And if, you know, if we look back even to November with F1, um, coming to Las Vegas for the first time. It's about driving incremental non-gaming traffic. So sporting events, um, concerts, we know the sphere is new to Las Vegas. It's all about getting people into Las Vegas um, to spend more than they might have otherwise. And really what we're seeing you know, with the Super Bowl is the operators such as MGM and Caesars, they're benefiting from the influx of people. And we like MGM over Caesars. We're positive on both uh, companies, but if we had to pick one, it'd be MGM. And it's it's the luxury customer, the luxury person coming into Las Vegas that has the ability to spend more. You know, Super Bowl just couldn't have been a better example of, we all saw the celebrities um, you know, on social media at the game um, there the week before. 
And what that is able to do, especially for a company like MGM, is you know bring up their hotel prices. Um, you know, Super Bowl is normally a Friday, Saturday, Sunday type of event in Las Vegas. Well, this year it started on Monday. Not only that, we were seeing uh, room rates about four or five x what they normally are for that typical week. And you you saw a lot of yeah. CEOs over the weekend of um, some of these of some of these companies, you know, echoing that of F one was a pretty good success, and Super Bowl is even two or three x of what that was just a couple of months ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just quickly, Zach, you have uh, Las Vegas Sands is a buy, you have MGM is a buy. Do you expect to see people spending more at the tables in Las Vegas, in Macau, and online? Yeah, I think that the U.S. market um, probably going to remain stable this year. We don't see a lot of upside there. Obviously, the Super Bowl will be a big event. Um, but we like companies that have some exposure to Macau just because we still think there's some room to run over there. Um, as you know, international travel returns. Uh, we we don't see a whole a whole lot of upside in Vegas just because the last few years have been so good. Um, so they're coming up on pretty tough comps. We do think obviously this first first quarter will be big because of the Super Bowl and some of the other events that are coming. But yeah, it's it's exactly like Jordan said. You know, they're they're looking to add a baseball team in the in the next coming years. So there's a lot of opportunity in yeah. Vegas, um, and, and we think it will remain stable. Yeah, they don't want to be thought of as Sin City anymore. They want to be thought of Entertainment City. Jordan Bender, Zach Waring, thank you both so very much. Really appreciate it.